Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of the Inside on Equinox Television. I am Babla Jonathan. In this edition of the program, we're going to be receiving two senior state personalities and it's a special edition and we're going to be looking at some news making events in the Republic of Cameroon this week. First, the appointment of the Prime Minister and other ministers by the President of the Republic, the deepening Anglophone crisis and the military crackdown announced by the President of the Republic in his end of year address to the nation when he said that if the uh, war mongers or better still the separatist fighters fail to drop their guns the military will be instructed to neutralize them will equally take a look at the devastating impact of the crisis on uh, the economy of the southwest and the northwest regions of the country as a whole and of course we'll continue with our series on the way out of the crisis meet our first guest in a few seconds Our first guest in this edition of the Inside is the mayor of Muyuka subdivision in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. It is one of the localities hardest hit by the Anglophone uh, crisis. He is equally uh, an economic uh, tycoon. His name, King Michael. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Babila. Lord Mayor, you are from the southwest region of the country and you listen to the uh, presidential decree appointing one of yours as Prime Minister, Chief Dr. John Guti, former uh, Minister of Special Duties at the Presidency of the Republic, former Minister Delegate at the Ministry of External Relations in charge of the relations with the Commonwealth, former Director of the National School of Administration and Magistracy, and of course traditional ruler of the Barombi people in the southwest region of the country. What's your take on this other appointment of another Prime Minister, the fifth from Anglophone Cameroon? Uh, thank you, Mr. Babila, for giving me the opportunity to comment on uh, the appointment yesterday uh, made by the head of state. Uh, should I remind you that uh, the Constitution gives him that uh, prerogative to choose whoever uh, will assist him in governing? And so I would have loved to not make any comments, but since you mentioned the name of uh, John Gute, the Prime Minister, uh, I think he's a seasoned jurist. I uh, wish him good luck uh, because the task is very challenging. But uh, being a jurist, being a chief, a traditional ruler, and having that calmness in him, uh, I think he will be up to the task. But remember that he is assisting in governing and he might have the very best intentions. But again, I and you we don't know what happens behind. I want to make you know that it is a very, very challenging job for him. He's charged with the responsibility of implementing the policies of, of the head of state. Of the head of state. And as far as the Anglophone crisis is concerned, Chief Dr. John Rute coming in in this context, what can we expect from him? And that's why I told you that it is a very challenging job because he's there only to implement the policies of the head of state. He might have all the terrible good intentions, but you have to submit what you have in mind for somebody to make the final decision. And so there are times where uh, uh, the former prime minister did all what he could. Where are we with the results? You can see on the ground for yourself. Do you think that he did not have the intention of resolving uh, the crisis? He had. But there are other forces which I and you, we can't see, that become a stumbling block to solutions to the problems. It is not to their making. So I said, Dr. Dionguti is a jurist, a level headed person. He is very calm and a traditional ruler. You know, a traditional ruler is a man, is a head of those that he rule. And so he will use all that experience to see if he can come out with a solution. 
But it does not entirely depend on him, Mr. Journalist. Sinigo. There are other forces that I and you, we cannot sit here to talk about. Does he have what it takes? He has what it takes to handle... The, 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 the challenges he, he has what it takes to handle these challenges. But I am telling you that there are other forces beyond which he cannot go in order to look for the solution to the Anglophone crisis. Trust me, he is somebody who has a very calm head. I bet you can see for yourself. The other day, his house was burned. It means that there are certain parameters. His that, private residence in Bobongo village. That he does not have control. And so, where does the solution lies? You will not tell me that you sit here and you don't know where it lies. We'll be coming back to that shortly. The President of the Republic equally appointed uh, other uh, persons uh, who are coming into the uh, Cameroonian administrative mechanism. We have, uh, for example, uh, the Minister delegated at the President in terms of relations with the Assemblies, Wakata uh, Bolvin. We equally have the Minister delegated at the President in charge of public contracts, Talba Mala, Ibrahim Talba Mala. We equally have the Minister of Culture, which is now uh, Bidum Pat, who was formerly uh, Minister of Sports and Physical Education. And here is my Bidum Pat, is handing over that position to Nasis Mwele Kombi, who is formerly Minister of Arts and Culture. And we have other appointments, education at the level of basic education. We have Serge uh, Etunjingwa, who back. is moving from the uh, Ministry of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises to the Ministry of Basic Education. We equally have the Minister of Mines, who is now uh, Dodo Ndoche, and of course, Urban Development, one of your uh, colleagues, the Mayor of now the Minister of Urban Development and Housing and of course we have Basili Ken Ashin who is now the Minister uh, of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises and of course one of the members of the G20, the group of 20 political parties who decided to support President Paul Beer, uh, Jean de Dieu of the Padek political party who has been appointed Minister Delegate at the Ministry of Justice. When you look at all of these uh, do you see any change in the administrative mechanism, in the manner of doing things of government? Do you see any change? I told you earlier that uh, appointments is, uh, according to the constitution, is uh, the prerogative of the head of state. Whoever has, has confidence that will help him implement government policies, he has the right to appoint. I all what I just wish to all those uh, gentlemen and uh, ladies that you have uh, named here is good luck. And may God bless them to, to, in order to accomplish uh, the heavy responsibilities that lie ahead of them. I have no comment other than that. And the Minister of Communication, Isachi Omar Bakari, has been switched to the Minister of Employment and Vocational Training. Uh, of and course. And is now the new Minister of Communication. Uh, of course. Uh, the head of state feels that uh, he would better save him in uh, that position than where he was previously. Again, it is his prerogative to choose whoever he wishes to save him in whatever position. All right, we're going to take a look at what the newspapers reported this week, the press review by Fomi Armstrong Sander. And when we come back, we'll talk about the deepening anglophone crisis and the announced military crackdown by the President of the Republic, who said if the war mongers or better still, the pro-independence fighters fail to drop their guns, the military will be instructed to neutralize them. Stay with us. They will be instructed to neutralize them, stay us. The advocate on January 1st, 2019 said Paul Bia Dibble's nation again in traditional New Year address omits announcements on expected talks with Anglophone leaders. Was that for refusal to drop arms? warmongers will be crushed. The drum reported that Paul Bia's New Year speech provokes Amazonia secessionists. Lay down arms or I come for you. Northwest governor survives attack. The advocate PCCP summit announced for early January. The drum trouble in Bali. Where is the fun of Bali and goes further to ask if traditional council can cleanse the blood-stained Bali.
you welcome back Mayor King Michael, Mayor of the Moyuka Council, one of the uh, localities hardest hit by this uh, deepening anglophone uh, crisis. And the President of the Republic says military crackdown is going to be implemented against the, uh, those he refers to as war mongers if they fail to drop their guns. What's your reaction to this kind of warning? issued by the President of the Republic in his end of year address to the nation. Uh, Mr. Journalist, uh, cry the beloved country. That's the way I'll start. Uh, the other day I was arguing with a friend who was a Christian and I was telling him that uh, I think there is some injustice in the way God designed mankind. Why is it that the black man is always behind the white man? in whatever we do. And yet we the black people we cannot learn a lesson. Military crackdown is one of the ways I can say of resolving issues. But it should be between countries and not within the nation. I think the head of state made that statement. But he also equally talked about ongoing dialogue. And I strongly believe that the head of state, being a political scientist, knows the principles of conflict resolution. So whatever he was talking, he was talking as the number one man of the country. But to my own small knowledge, which I learned during conversation with friends, the principles which are, the first is you declare ceasefire, the second is you grant amnesty, and the third is you call for the dialogue where brothers and sisters will sit on the same table and have whatever discussion and agree on in principles on what to do. You know, because you need to give confidence to the people. This thing has been going on for two years. And I want to assure you that those who have been dying are Cameroonians, both the military and the separatists, as whatever name you give them. They are Cameroonians. The civilians, they are Cameroonians. The military are trained to kill. They are not trained for law and order. The military is supposed to fight the adversary of Cameroon, not Cameroonians. We are on the ground, and we see what happens every day. I will not sit here to be sharing tears, but a lot of Cameroonians have died. Before these young men and women sign to work and save the country, they will sign to save Cameroon. They do not sign to kill Cameroonians. And the, and the government has been saying that the military are on the ground to ensure the safety of the people, to protect the integrity of the nation, so the integrity of the nation is supposed to be protected by the military. We understand. But is the country being disintegrated? I say no. Those people who are being killed are Cameroonians and they equally love the country. I mean, everybody has the right to express their feeling. But I think it is the governors that need to go out there and tell Cameroonians that we should live like one with our brother and sister. I mean, and the only way to do is to put in measures that will make them have a sense of belonging. It is not by sending them into the bushes. But Bring them forth to you. You indicated earlier that the President of the Republic equally talked about dialogue. On the dialogue. He has talked about dialogue several on several occasions many persons have been talking about dialogue uh, authorities have been saying dialogue is going on we are dialoguing we are we want to dialogue but the other people there's just one division they don't want to dialogue and so on and so forth and now uh, it's like the only way out is if you don't drop your guns we're going to instruct the military to crush you uh, you are talking about more bloodshed right i don't think more bloodshed will be the solution now I have told you, Mr. Babila, we have to be sincere to ourselves. The Frenchman, the American, will, can, will not come and resolve problems in Cameroon. 
those problems will be resolved by Cameroonians. I'll give you an example. In France, you see what is going on. How many military people have you seen on the streets? You see police people. Police people, gendarmes are trained to establish law and order in society, not the military. If the military is there to frighten the population, to scare the population, to make them go into the bushes. I travel from Boya to Kumba. That's where you will know what I'm talking about. It is not I are you sitting here in Douala and talking. I says travel from once you just get out of you get cross Boya from Muya till you get to Kumba. You would think that it's a graveyard. Is that how it used to be? For two years, have we resolved the issue? So, I don't think more bloodshed is a solution to the Anglophone crisis. And later it on, is a problem of dialogue, of understanding, of love, of fraternity amongst Cameroonians. Because as I tell you, those who are being killed are Cameroonians. They are not foreigners. Since this thing started, how many foreigners have died? So why do we think that we still have to kill more Cameroonians in order to resolve what will be eternalized in Cameroon? All what the solutions we are going to look at solutions to solve Cameroon's problem. I'll give an example. See the can issue. What has happened? They have come. It has been withdrawn. Who are the losers? Cameroonians. And what has been done? Nothing. I mean, when you talk of football, you know, Cameroonians just are recognized. They did just moved. Well, and it was not withdrawn. They did just. But, but we are Cameroonians. Let's wait and see. From 2019. Let's 2020. wait and see. 2021 is coming. If we host it, it will be a terrific jamboree for all Cameroonians to enjoy. Their brothers and sisters will be coming to feast with them. All right. Coming back to the Anglophone crisis, uh, later in the program we're going to take Mayon King Michael's own way out of the crisis when we talk about uh, when we come to the our series on the way out of this crisis now your locality is one of the areas that has been uh, practically crumbled that has been reduced to nothing and the council is suffering the people are suffering business is practically at zero and you are a business tycoon apart from being a business tycoon you are a mayor and your council is severely affected. What evaluation can we make of the impact of this crisis on the council and the locality of Munich? On the council, severe. Uh, I want just to tell you that it is almost inexistent because all our resources are being depleted. We can count only on a few centim given to us by the state. All the sources that we used to collect extra revenue is gone. Now, in terms of Moyuka, Moyuka is not existing any longer. And the, the council has moved. The council well, has because of the security uh, situation, we had no choice because we still have to save the population, remember? And you will not save the population by dying. We have to look for education which we feel is safe in order to be saving the population. And thank God, I think the population, they themselves, those who have been saved, appreciate that uh, gesture. Now, in terms of ac economic activities in they the council to... Well, I will not sit here to disclose, disclose education All right. for security measures. All right. <laughs> yes, you were talking about the, the, the impact. Uh, economic impact. Moyoka used to be one of those, the breadbasket of the nation. You will see what will happen next year with food prices. Cocoa, coffee, every cassava, I don't know what to tell us. It's almost gone. Moika is left empty because of what is going on on the ground. And what is happening in Moika is almost what is happening between Southwest and Northwest. And, uh, the, the, the government treasury will even give you a better snapshot of the crisis, the financial crisis. Pamo is gone. CDC is gone. Supreme Mount is struggling. No timber is being extracted from Norway and Southwest. All the economic activities of Norway and Southwest is on the ground. People are suffering. We are begging that politicians should put their head together and look for a solution to this problem. Please, please, please. People are dying. People are suffering. We need 
we need peace back in the country. Many of the councils in places like Kwakwa have practically shut down. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to sit here and tell you something which I have not gone there to see whether the doors are shut down. But I think any other mayor will tell you the same story that mayor can, mayor can sit here to tell you in Northwest and Southwest. If you are even lucky, if you are even lucky to still be in a municipality, count yourself to be one of the most luckiest person. And you are a business tycoon like every other business person in the southwest and northwest regions of the country. You are receiving a big blow in your business activities in the two regions. I, I will tell you, I, I have a 68 bedroom hotel in Noya. For almost four months today, I have not received one, one, one client. I say one. My electricity bill is about two million every month. My uh, tax payroll. It's about uh, six, seven million every month. That money has been coming out of my pocket for the past four months. My caterpillars, a D7, which is less than 10 years, was burnt in Southern Valley Northwest. My Toyota pickup truck was burnt. My engine saw was burnt. My uh, motorcycle was burnt. My office was burnt. I'm left with nothing. But thank God I'm still surviving. So uh, what do you want to tell me? That, am I seeing something different and, and than if, other Cameroonians? And if we want to count the loss in terms of uh, in money, we'll be talking about billions. Of course, on my side. But I am just that patriotic Cameroonian. We love Cameroon. But when it will get to a point, hey, I was okay, let me look for other ways of struggling in life. Because I brought other investment here. I love that for the land. So, how are you managing to uh, keep? Your, 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 your companies. I'm just hoping that the hotel and the others, uh, the workers in China, so the health workers are still there, hoping that the situation will revert to normal and uh, uh, clients will start, will start coming. They are there to ensure that the property stays in a good state. Uh, other than that, again, by the end of this month, I'm going to lay off almost 80 uh, percent of the staffs. I don't have a choice, Mr. Journalist. I don't have it. It is burning us. We are in a very deep shit situation. And that's why when I see we politicians trying on the road to and we try to, I mean everybody is trying to look for a way to resolve it. But I think this type of conflicts have happened in other countries in the world. Can we try a little bit of example? that led to a successful ending to disguise. And just like you're, 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 you're suffering the impact of the Anglophon crisis, um, what you're painting as uh, impact of the crisis on your business is uh, practically uh, a drop of water in an ocean when we talk about companies like the CDC and Pamol and all the rest where workers are even attacked, some of them their fingers cut off uh, uh, and things like that. And some of the workers went on strike recently demanding for over six months of salaries and all of that. Mr. Journalist, it's a pathetic situation. I'm just uh, uh, laggards. Uh, I think uh, when I think of what uh, the general managers of those corporations are going through, uh, tears can run down from my eyes. Those were very vibrant corporations uh, in the good days, uh, but now we have started talking about history. Uh, so I just wish, again, as I said, that uh, God should reign on Cameroon in order for things to come back to normal so that one more time we can start uh, enjoying our very good climate, our very good people. You know, the people of uh, those provinces are very loving. We love everybody. We love every Cameroonian. Don't bother about what politicians go onto the roadstream and say. Every Cameroonian loves every Cameroonian. But the issue we have, Mr. Journalist, again, I repeat, the black race was done by God. There is something wrong with us. You don't dialogue with your friends. You dialogue with your enemies. Maybe uh, somebody told me the black were not doomed by God, were not kind of discriminated by God, but they themselves are the problem. They have decided to maybe abandon the ways of God and choosing their own ways. 
going to progress with our series on the way out. And I want to call this uh, May of King Matthew's own way yes. out of the crisis. Yes. What is your own way? Where is your own door? If you were to advise if you were to advise uh, the authorities that be, that should take the necessary the pro-independence fighters, what would you say? Okay, I'll put it in two. My advice to the governors and my advice to the government. I start with the governors. My advice, and which I am not a political scientist, is that we should follow steps that will resolve this crisis as it has done somewhere else in the world. For example, I mean, the head of state uh, needs to declare a stop all what is going on on both sides. He needs to grant amnesty that his children to all those who have been involved in this crisis. And he needs to call for a political dialogue. I mean, dialogue, which everybody seated on that table will dialogue be coming without, with, tab, without, without, pre, without preconditions. If there is no topic which is taboo in Cameroon. Cameroon is Cameroon. <laughs> Remember, when you are dialoguing, you take perspective of what had been and see how you can modify it to suit the present day situation. For example, I'll give you decentralization. It has failed. I'm sitting here, Mr. Babila, to tell you that it has failed because I am involved. So is it, a, 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 is it can we modify it to meet up with the challenges of today? Of course. Why are we scared to discuss other ways to come up with a political sol uh, solution to govern? We should not be scared. We are not going to, nobody is going to hurt anybody. But together, we shall agree as Cameroonians for a better solution. And to the separatists. But the head of state say you can only discuss with those who are, you know, thinking. But, I, I mean, I'm saying, you have asked my opinion. Those who are thinking secession and federalism, they are not well. I mean, give me any developed country in this world. They have succeeded with centralization, except I, I did not go to school. Just tell me one country. So why are we scared to talk about federalism? Is it not a way of governing? See, I, I think what I want to say is we should be open to any discussion, except separating Cameroonians. Because it is not separating Cameroon that will resolve the issue. I know what I'm talking about. Those guys, so-called separatists, we need to go there and educate them and tell them that, I'll give you an example, if federalism is practiced, it means what? Almost 90% of what is to take place in Yaoundé will take place in their regions. The district port in Limbe will be under their authority. Tourism, public works, commerce, and in them just a few. Under their authority. The their governors will be elected. The mayors will be elected. The central government will have a very little role to play. The people of the region will be accountable to themselves. Not only for Northwest and Southwest, but for all Cameroonians. So why are we scared to take the administration to the people to govern themselves? Because those who have been feeding fat on it don't want to let it go. In a good country, what could have happened in this type of situation? Remember, decentralization was announced since 1996. If we, the government has uh, chosen if to we, the decentralized collectivity, were not satisfied, we could have gone to the courts that we want it to be implemented. And if it was, as we said, the judicial being independent, in the real sense, they will look into it and say, hey, administration, we have given you this number of time 
to let go those uh, uh, resources, financial and uh, whatever, to the various local collectivities to better the administration, to better the lives of the population. That's what could have happened. But 22 years, we every day we keep talking about the same thing. And the head of state said in his end of year address to the nation that more powers will be given to the local uh, councils to manage their uh, communities. Uh, he has so. spoken. We are waiting. We hope this time it will be different. 2017, we heard about that. 2018, he has spoken. He is the father of the nation. If the nation is going in the right direction, it is to his credit. If it is going in the wrong direction, it is to his credit. And until now, the, the, the decentralization, uh, effective decentralization, which is almost synonymous to federalism, has not been working. Well, I don't want to hear the word effective. effective. Decentralization is decentralization. It is not yet there. Might be the decentralization was traveling from Yaoundé to the various uh, 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 local collectivities. The journey is too far. They are still on the road. Might be before they get to that destination, most of us, those mayors, will no longer be in place. What does it take? It takes the nod of a head and a pen to all the ministries. I want 20, 30, 50 percent of your resources to be transferred to the local collectivities. I want it done before the end of 2019. And that will be done. And you set a body to effectively ensure that it is being respected. That will be done. But if it is again, we are okay, we are we are waiting. So we are waiting. All right. So if you were to advise the governors, those who are governing, the authorities that be on decentralization or federalism. You advise them to put these two things on the table or to choose which of them. I remember, let me tell you something. Whether you call it decentralization, whether you call it federalism, whether you call it confederation, when they sit on the table, they will agree on which one. What the population wants is how to manage their affairs. All right, if you were to advise the population now as far as the way out of this crisis is concerned. Okay, I will advise the population in this aspect that if we have, call it federation, call it effective decentralization, that is the way you have been calling, it means that those activities that usually take all money all thrown in the central treasury will be redistributed to the various collectivities that they will use in improving in their living condition. So what are they expected to do, the population at this juncture, the population, the pro-independence fighters, what are they expected to do? What uh, attitude are they expected to put up for us to move out of these struggle waters? They, I, I cannot, I'm not a spokesperson for them. But Mr. Babla, this is two years that was started. And remember our vibrant military that have been put on the field for two years. They have been dying. They have been dying. They have been doing their best. I have said people have died on both sides. And to me, like what Christian candidate to me and the a man, the Sinoc lad, the idea which they brought up. I strongly believe that behind the doors, government is thinking, government is looking for a way to give them that opportunity to bring together children of Cameroon so to sit down and agree on what effectively the way forward for this crisis. Uh, you know, extremism exists in every side. But when we sit on the table with mediators, they have to shift the goalposts, whether we like it or not. We have to. Because, again, we have to agree to do the right thing. Let us do the right thing 
in order to get out of this crisis, in order to improve on the living conditions of Cameroonians, in order for Cameroonians to live freely, in order for Cameroonians to live peacefully, in order for Cameroonians to strive to get to, to get to greater heights. Remember, we are the giants of Central Africa. But if you see what is going on today, there are certain countries who are almost getting an edge over us. Why? Because we, as Cameroonians, we don't want to see into our problems. There are countries like Ivory Coast, Ghanaian. I remember years where Ghanaians were in Cameroon looking for jobs. How many Ghanaians do you find around today? I mean, when you talk about the economy of Ghana, you are talking about a great and expanded economy. So if there is a way which we can sit together as Cameroonians and forge a way forward to improve on the living conditions of Cameroonians, let us do it for goodness sake. All right, Mayor King Michael, thanks so much for coming. You are the man of the Muyuka Council in the Southwest region of Cameroon and a business tycoon. Thanks so much and Happy New Year 2019. I wish you the best of time and may the Almighty God settle into the hearts of every Cameroonian so that we can one day sit on the same table and look for solutions to resolve all what has been going on, not only in the English part of Cameroon, but on all Cameroonians, so that we can together live at one, one people, one person, one Cameroon. Thanks for coming, Mr. Mayor. You are welcome. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. In a few seconds, meet our second guest in this special edition of The Insight.